Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be talking about the biases that generative AI may have. So if you're interested in hearing about the different biases that any generative artificial intelligence may have, then please keep on watching. So it's really important that as we're learning how to use generative AI in our workflow and more and more every day, that we're very aware and conscious of the biases that may be inherent in any of these generative AI tools. So I thought that we would actually start off with asking ChatGPT, what are the biases that generative AI may have? So you can see ChatGPT has outlined five different biases that AI language models may have. One is the confirmation bias. So it may inadvertently exhibit confirmation bias by generating responses that actually align with very prevalent opinions and beliefs found in the data and the information on the internet. And this can reinforce existing biases rather than challenging or providing a balanced perspective. So we have to really be careful of confirmation bias when we're using any kind of large language model. The second one is gender bias. And, you know, large language models, of course, reflect the gender biases that are reflected on the internet and all the information that's around. So if we were to actually ask a generative AI text to image tool, you know, what does a doctor look like? What does a nurse look like? I'm sure that there are going to be some gender biases that actually come out. And I'll show you some gender biases of images a little bit later. So the third bias is the cultural bias. So of course, any kind of output can lead to cultural biases based on the information on the internet. So as an example, if you will, we're going to input into any large language model, who are the most famous pirates of all time? You're probably going to get a response that's very much Anglo-centric rather than the Asian pirates that were actually very famous. So we have to be really careful of the cultural bias of the response. The fourth bias is stereotyping. And of course, there's racial, ethnic, as well as professional, vocational stereotypes. So like the one that I said about doctors and nurses. So we really have to be careful of stereotyping when we're evaluating the output of any generative AI. And of course, there is source bias. So not everything on the internet is factual. We have to actually check the facts and use our critical thinking. We have to be able to discern facts, truth, and falsehoods. And so it's important that we also fact check. So let's have a look at some of the biases, the gender bias in particular. So here I input it into Canva, draw something beautiful I haven't seen. And there's a gender bias that it's a woman with lots of makeup from the 50s, I imagine. And then on the right, I asked Canva to draw something ugly I haven't seen and it drew a man. And actually this picture looks very much like my husband, so I don't know who has deemed it ugly on the internet. So they're just a few different biases that we need to actually be aware of, be really mindful of when we're looking and evaluating any kind of output from a large language model or any generative AI. But once we are aware of these biases, I think that any generative AI can be a really powerful tool to really help enhance our workflow, to enhance teaching and learning for our students. So how might we harness the power of generative AI to really enhance teaching and learning and prepare our students for this exciting unknown world? Thank you so much for joining me this week and I really hope to see you next time. Bye.